So there's this website that gives you some mock-up REST services that you can work with over here and we're specifically going to work with the POST that also gives us a POST operation as well as put another. Um, so this is the basic um, URL for POSTs and it returns a list of all the POSTs. So we're going to go over into VBCS and create a new application that would leverage this REST service. And again, the idea here is to show you how to work with um, mostly um, single operations. Right? So we're starting with the get many though. So we just put in the URL and if we test it from here, we'll get all the posts. We can then copy it into the response and create our first endpoint that returns to us all the posts. Next, we can go over and add a method that fetches a specific post. So this is basically the same endpoint, but if you provide the end number, it would give you the post at that ID. Okay, so all we need to do here is give the endpoint posts and then add an ID, which we put into squarely brackets, because this is a parameter. We can also indicate that this gets us a single record and then test it, pass in a parameter, any of the IDs, run the test, and you get that specific instance. So again, copy the response, and you have your next endpoint. Next, we're going to use um, the method called POST that is available over here. Okay, so to do that, we add another endpoint. This one would be POST. Okay and this one is actually a create method and then we can go over and we can test this okay so we need to know what we actually pass so my guess is that we're passing the same thing that we're passing when we're getting a specific record so let's pick up this one and just paste it over here and we can change the user ID and the ID here and send it and uh, no, we, this actually doesn't work and that's because there's a duplicate record alright so the solution is simply not to pass the ID of the record over here so we'll just remove this one okay, and send it again and this time it looks ok we got the new record with a new ID Alright, so you now have the response over here, so we copy the response, and there's also the request, so copy the request over, and this helps us define the structure that we need to pass to this method. Now that we have our services defined, let's go over and create a new web application where we can build interaction with those REST services. Um, I'm not going to use any of the wizards, I'm going to build it manually because this helps you understand how things are being done. Right, so we take a page and we're going to first drop an input text on it and the first thing we're going to do is have a search capability okay so we're going to change the um, title here to indicate that this is what we're searching for and then the value for this field is going to be stored in a variable so let's get a new variable in the page we'll call it the search ID variable and this can be a number this is the value that we will be passing to the REST service. Okay, so now just make sure to connect the data for this field into this variable. So when you change the field in the UI, the variable would change. Once we do the search, we want to show some of the results. So let's put in um, a couple of fields here, but maybe before we put the fields, we should define a type okay, based on the endpoints that is the get with the ID. So the first one, the third one, okay, and this one returns a value, okay, of this structure, and we're going to create a type based on this value, like that. And then we're going to create a new variable based on the type we just created, okay. So this is our post, and it's based on this type, and it immediately gets all those fields in there. Now that we have those fields, we can go back into our UI and drop, for example, another field here and then bind each one of the fields 
to one of the values that is going to be returned from the REST service. Okay, so here's our variable and the subfields here, and we're going to just connect each one of them, one to the title and one to the body. Nice. And now let's hook up a search event. So let's do it when we change the value in this field. So we're going to add a value change event. In this event we're going to call a REST endpoint. The endpoint that we're calling is the endpoint with the ID. Okay. And it needs an input parameter which is of course our search ID field. Okay, so we just drag and drop to map the two. Okay, like that. Alright, so now we're hooked up. All we need to do is specify that when we return the value it's in a specific format. Okay, so this is the type we defined. And then we're going to use an assign variable to assign our specific return from the REST call into this variable. And you can see they have the same structure because we defined the variable on the same type. Uh, so we can just map it at the top level. And now let's see our page in action. We'll switch over to the live mode, put in an ID and tab out of the field, which would go call the rest and we'll get the values back. If we switch to another ID, we get the other values. Alright, so this is a GET operation done manually. Next we're going to create another section in our page, so let's put here some splitter, like that, and then uh, we'll create a section that will allow us to insert a new post. So, uh, to do that, we are going to first define a type. And this type is again based on an endpoint. This time it's the post endpoint. And you can see there are two types here. There's the response and the request. And we're going to create the request type in our case. Okay. So we also know that in order to create something, we don't actually need to pass the ID. Okay. It's automatically populated, so can uh, deselect it give it a meaningful name, like a new post, and this is our new type. So now back in our UI, we're going to drop some input text component here that will allow us to insert information about a new post, so we'll drop those three columns over here, okay, and they need to be connected to a variable. Right, so we still haven't created a variable, so let's go back over here, switch to the variable and create a new variable, and we can call this one the new post, and it's going to be based on the structure of a new post. Okay, so it's going to have the same fields. Um, so now we can basically go over and map each one of those fields to a value um, that we're going to pass to the REST service and also change the titles body here and we need to hook it up to the variable and this one can be the user ID again hook up the value here to the user ID alright and then let's add the submit button and define an event on it okay so this button, when we call it, would call the POST operation. So let's define the action flow. We're going to take and invoke a REST service. And we're going to select the POST operation that we have defined before. Now, a POST operation expects to have a body passed to it. Okay. Now, we know that the body is of this structure, of the new POST. So we can just map this whole variable to this body. Click Save, and that's it. We also know that this REST then returns, this REST call returns something in the structure of a POST, so we can indicate this, and use an assign variable to get the return value and put it, for example, into another place. Um, we can put it directly into the POST uh, variable that we already have there like that. Right, so we'll click Save and uh, we can now test our application. So we'll put in a title and put
put some text here. Oops, uh, the fact that it shows up here indicates that I did something wrong. Specifically, I think here I tied both of them to the title now. The second one should be to the body, like that. Alright, so back into the live mode, put in some body for the text. And we can also put some user ID. And then click the save. It saved the data and returned the value over to the top of the page. Another thing that I can show you is that when we do this, it creates a new ID, right? So we can show you the new ID. For example, we can use a file notification and inject it to be after we call the REST service. Uh, we know that the REST service returns a structure that includes the ID of the post, so we're going to show that one in this message up here. Again, we're going to go back into live mode, put in a new title, put in a body and the user ID, and when we click the save, there we go, here's our new ID.